Good evening. I'm Patty Muldoon on behalf of the League of Women Voters. Welcome to Arlington Candidates Night uh, for our town election on Saturday, April 7, 2018. Candidates Night is jointly sponsored by Arlington's Vision 2020 and the League of Women Voters of Arlington. Tonight's video program is being broadcast live by Arlington Community Media, ACME. And we want to thank ACME's Executive Director, Norm MacLeod, Studio Manager, Jeff Monroe, Government Access Coordinator, Sean Keane, and the rest of the staff and volunteers of ACME for broadcasting tonight's event and for ACME's rebroadcasts on the government channels. Comcast 22, RCN Channel 15, Verizon Channel 26. For those watching later on Arlington Community Media, it's 8 p.m. on Wednesday, March 28, 2018, in the Robbins Memorial Town Hall Auditorium. And on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Arlington and Vision 2020, it's my pleasure to introduce Candidates Night, which presents candidates for local office. Candidates Night is a nonpartisan service provided, providing information to our voters. Membership in the League of Women Voters is open to women and men. Throughout our 98-year history, the League has built a nationally respected reputation for providing candidates forums and debate for the benefit of voters and for supporting informed participation and understanding of government and major policy issues. Based on grassroots membership input, the League also seeks to influence public policy through education and advocacy. The League of Women Voters takes action on specific issues that we've studied, but we never support or oppose candidates. So I want to take a moment to note upcoming events near the election. First, as a reminder, our town election is Saturday, April 7th. Polls open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The very next morning, the Arlington League of Women Voters is hosting a brunch for our state legislators on Sunday, April 8th. If you'd like to attend this open-ended discussion, which will be at a member's home, please speak to one of us tonight or visit our website, lwva.com. Vision 2020 is sponsoring a meeting for all precincts this year on Thursday, April 12th, 7 to 9 p.m. here in Town Hall. More information will be available closer to that date, but the event is designed to allow residents to learn about the issues before town meeting and to discuss them with their town meeting members from their precinct. So those events are vote on the 7th, talk with our state legislators the 8th, come back here on the 12th to learn about the town warrant. Tonight's program will include statements from candidates and a question and answer period. So audience members, please submit your questions in advance tonight, uh, writing them on cards in the back of the table. The questions will be reviewed by a committee of league members and a representative from Vision 2020 to represent the broadest concerns to the audience. And our moderator will present the questions to the candidates. So there are no questions um, that will be provided out loud from you. This year, please note that we have a ballot question. Shall the town vote to have the elected town treasurer and collector of taxes become an appointed town treasurer and collector of taxes to the town. So moving from elected to appointed. Mass General Law C41 Section B provides for the conversion of any elected office of the town except Board of Selectmen and School Committee to an appointed office. The 2017 annual town meeting approved sending the question relative the, to the elected office of the town treasurer and collector of taxes to you, the voters. If the question is approved, the treasurer and collector of taxes would continue to serve the remainder of his term to 2020. In the interim period, the process and authority for making such an appointment would be developed and require the approval of town meeting. 
Once again, I request that you please silence all your cell phones. And as a courtesy to the candidates, hold your applause until the end of the candidates' presentations for each office. Thanks. So now I'd like to introduce our guest moderator, Margaret Copey of the League of Women Voters of Lexington, our regular moderator for these events. Margaret. Thank you, Patty, and good evening. Thank you for inviting me again. I'm feeling very welcomed, as always, in Arlington. I'd like to start by outlining the procedure and rules for the evening. There is one uncontested seat for assessor for a three-year term. The candidate, Kevin P. Feely, is not present tonight. The candidates for town offices will appear in this order this evening, selectmen followed by the school committee. Due to the allocated cable TV broadcast time, we will conclude the program at 9.30 p.m. and there will be no intermission. Each candidate will make an introductory statement with two minutes allowed. The candidates will speak in the order in which they appear on the ballot. To ensure fairness, each candidate will have a time warning from the league timers in the first row. When 20 seconds remain, the timer will hold up a yellow card. Can you all see where the yellow card is? And when the time is up, a red card, thank you, will be raised. At that point, the candidate should only finish a short sentence and stop. After the candidates have finished their, their statements, we will have questions and answers. As mentioned before, the audience can submit questions on cards at the table in the back of the auditorium. All candidates will have the opportunity to answer each question for their office. The candidate with second placement on the ballot will be the first to answer the first question and we will continue to rotate through the ballot for each question. Each candidate will have one minute to answer the question. Again, a 20 second warning will be indicated by a yellow card and a red card will indicate that time is up. After the questions and answers, each candidate may make a one minute closing statement with the same time indicators. The candidates will speak in reverse ballot order for their closing statements. We ask for the cooperation of all candidates in following these rules, and I don't think that'll be a problem, so that everyone will have a fair chance. As a reminder, because the program is carried live and will be rebroadcast, we ask the candidates to speak directly into the microphones to be heard. So now we begin. On the stage tonight, we have been with the candidates for selectmen. There are two seats open, each for a three-year term. There are three candidates. A. Michael Ruderman, John V. Hurd, and Joseph A. Curro, Jr. The five members of the Board of Selectmen serve three-year overlapping terms. They act as the town's executive branch to formulate town policy, ensure compliance with state laws, and administer many town meeting decisions. The Board appoints the town manager to be the professional manager of town services and departments except for the schools. The selectmen also serve as the Board of Public Works and the Board of Survey, compile the warrant, grant licenses and permits, appoint election officers, review budgets, and settle claims against the town. The members announce all elections, attend hearings and other town functions, and deal with traffic and safety matters. We will now hear opening statements from the candidates in the order in which they appear on the ballot. First candidate is Mr. Ruderman. Mr. Ruderman, you have two minutes. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Good evening. Why do we elect a board of selectmen? For leadership, meeting challenges, solving problems. Challenges like a high school long past its functional lifespan. And I'll see that building project through to success, just like I did with the Thompson rebuild and the Minuteman High School debt exclusion vote. The challenge of making Arlington an age-friendly community, a quarter of Arlington's population is 55 years or older. Challenges of road and sewer repairs, a senior center so far out of compliance with the ADA that the very people it's supposed to serve can't get in or out. Challenges like waking up one morning to find yourself living next to a demolition site. You need a selectman that'll stand up for your neighborhood against the noise and the pounding, whether you live on Irving Street, Decatur, Washington, Webcoet. 
You need a selectman that'll fight to protect your neighborhood from a ruinous development plan. As town meeting instructed the board of selectmen back in 2001 to begin negotiations, then to acquire the Mugar wetlands. Yes, I would be a new voice on the board. And with that voice, and with everything I've learned in 27 years of living here, 17 years in town meeting, and hundreds of hours in committee meetings, I'll deal with this challenge and others to the town that I love. Arlington is and must continue to be the town we cherish and feel welcomed in. Babies, kids, families, adults, empty nesters, seniors, everyone. That's what I mean by my campaign theme of Arlington for everyone. My name is Mike Ruderman, the first name on the ballot. I hope to earn one of your votes on April 7. Thank you, Mr. Ruderman. Second candidate is Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurd, you have two minutes. Good evening. My name is John Hurd, and I'm seeking to serve on the Arlington Select Board. I'd like to first thank Vision 2020 and the League of Women Voters for hosting this debate tonight. I grew up in Arlington. I attended the Hardy School, the Audison Middle School, and I graduated from Arlington Catholic High School in 2001. I now live with my wife and two boys who will soon enroll in the Dallin School in Arlington Heights, and I operate a law office right here in Arlington Center. Arlington was an amazing place to grow up, and I've truly enjoyed how the town has evolved into the vibrant, diverse community that it is today. I am very passionate about this town. I can't imagine raising my family in any other location. I want to join the current board members in addressing the critical issues facing the town in the next term, including the rebuild of Arlington High School, maintaining fiscal stability, revitalizing our business districts, and continuing to provide the top rate services to our seniors, students, and all town residents. I was fortunate to have received the benefit of this town my entire life, and I want to serve to ensure that Arlington continues to improve for my family, for your family, and for all residents that call Arlington home. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Third candidate is Mr. Curl. Mr. Curl, you have two minutes. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Thank you to the League Vision 2020 ACMI, my fellow candidates, and the residents of Arlington, both here in Town Hall and at home. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Joe Curo, and for the past decade, I've had the honor to serve the residents in this town in elective office, both on the school committee and on the board of selectmen, where I'm currently chair. You know, the job of selectmen can be difficult. The hours away from family are long, and the issues are often controversial, but it's all worth it. Arlington was recently cited as one of the top 10 places in the country to raise a family. Our efforts to make Arlington a welcoming community have earned us a near-perfect Municipal Equality Index score. Our schools are strong, our quality of life is high, and our real estate market is robust. At the same time, we have major challenges including an aging high school, an expiring fiscal stability plan, a limited commercial tax base, and insufficient affordable housing. If I am reelected, I will continue addressing all of these issues and more. You know, I set high standards for myself. I value honesty, and I strive to maintain a strong work ethic. I also make every effort to be accessible to the members of our community. So before the three of us are put in the hot seat, I, I want to ask a question to those of you in this hall. Could you please raise your hand if previous tonight, to tonight, you've ever crossed paths with me, heard me speak, or had a conversation with me, maybe at a school, a community event, or in the course of town business? It's a lot of hands. <laughs> and if you did not raise your hand, let's talk. <laughs> because I always gain interesting perspectives when I meet new people, and um, that's the lifeblood of this job. So, in the same way, I'm looking forward to learning from my fellow candidates during the course of this evening's debate, and I hope that in turn that I will give Arlington voters the confidence in my fitness to serve another three years as one of your selectmen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Curl. We will now start the questions, and the first one to answer will be Mr. Hurd, and the first question is, do you support the ballot question to make the treasurer an appointed position, and if it passes, what appointment process would you recommend? Well, do I support the question? Yes, I, the ballot question, yes I do. 
I think it's time for Arlington to transition into an appointed treasurer position. All municipalities that surround Arlington that have similar populations and fiscal situations have transitioned to the to an appointed appointed treasurer position as part of the consolidated financial finance department and I think it's time for Arlington to catch up with the times and this will also open up uh, although we've had great treasurers in the past few years it will open up new candidates for this vital position as far as the appointment process you know I, I think the sorry, just like other town appointments I would weigh the all the candidates it would go through I would think the Board of Selectmen and then by recommendation of the town manager we would look at all candidates based on qualifications and choose the the best candidate for the job. Thank you. Mr. Curro. Thank you very much. I absolutely support the question. You know, out of um, <clears throat> all communities and uh, towns in the Commonwealth with populations over 10,000 or with um, average tax bills above the median or with budgets above the median, 85% of them have moved towards uh, appointed professional treasurers, which means they get a pool of candidates that's more than just drawn from the residents and those who, who are able to uh, stand election. This, um, our current treasurer is fantastic, but he was elected really on a single platform, and that's really to put himself out of a job and to help shepherd us towards um, a, a professionalization, a further professionalization of our municipal uh, financial services. This is all part of a package. A couple of years ago, we moved towards swinging the, um, the, the um, uh, assessor, director of assessments, underneath the town manager. Um, we now voted, the Board of Selectmen voted uh, favorable action on the creation of a consolidated municipal finance department as well as swinging the comptroller over underneath the um, town manager. So it would really be fall to the town manager and probably the deputy town manager who covered, who's our CFO de facto. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Curl. Mr. Ruderman. Doctors say do no harm. Engineers say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I would say as the uh, chairman of uh, our present treasurer's uh, campaign a year ago that he ran on uh, a platform of modernizing the office, instituting uh, reforms and consolidation, streamlining functions, bringing online a new municipal payment system and offering improved customer service which won national attention as December closed out and Arlington set its, its course on making hundreds of residents real estate tax bills for the first half of 2018 payable and deductible in 2017. We are well served by the treasurer we have. Our present board, chairman included, have been effusive in their praise. I would say we've done a very good job. Congratulations voters, you've picked a very good treasurer. I'll continue to trust you. Thank you. Next question, and we will start with Mr. Kerr on this one and you've already started in on this, Article 19 of the Town Warrant proposes the creation of a consolidated Department of Municipal Finance. What considerations are important to you in this decision? Thank you for the question. This is something that we've been looking at for quite a long time now, um, and I've, I've always been um, on board. Um, uh, what we really want to do is we want to have all of our financial um, capabilities within one house. Currently, they're not even geographically uh, located with, with one another. We have our comptroller is actually housed over in the high school. Um, as I said, I, I think that bringing the assessments together, bringing the, um, the deputy town manager under the same, same roof, bringing the uh, treasurer under the same roof. C currently, we've made a lot of strides. We've moved towards Munis as our common platform, where right now the, uh, the deputy town manager can actually look at the same numbers that the comptroller is looking at with the press of a button. I would like to have further coordination around that. The departments work very well currently, but a formalization is important. Um, I mentioned in my earlier answer that the comptroller is also being moved over in, uh, potentially into that, and I think that whistleblower protections are important as well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ruderman. Thank you. I'm in favor of, uh, of 
positive action on Article 19 as well as on Article 18. Both 18 and 19 have been written and proposed by our Treasurer to further his program of modernizations in the office. Uh, I'll be looking particularly to the language when it's presented here in town meeting for uh, checks and balances because the, the one downside or the one risk that I could see in, in such a consolidated department would be having enough independent eyes looking and cross-checking. We've had problems before, uh, sums of money that uh, uh, should have been there and weren't in, in various budgets, and I believe having additional eyes is always a good thing. But I'm in favor of it, as I am for the other modernizations that our current elected treasurer has proposed. Thank you. Mr. Hurd. I'm in fa as mentioned, I'm in favor of the Consolidated Finance Department it streamlines our financial executives, allows for aggressive communication right now when, as they're in different, or as they were in different locations. This puts all of our financial officers together and it helps to, to st streamline and make the fi our finances easier to operate. And it also creates a larger department that creates some upward mobility for the people that serve and this will allow us to hire and retain much better candidates who stay in town for a longer period since they have a job to look to in the future. Thank you. We now go to the next question, and this one will start with Mr. Ruderman. Given that we have an operating override and a debt exclusion for Arlington High School coming in the next few years, what do you think is the best way to coordinate the two decisions? It's a very serious um, matter to go in front of the voters, residents, and say, for all that you've been paying the town, for all the services you've been receiving, we need more. I think the first thing we owe the voters is a thorough and convincing and empathetic explanation of where we are how well we've been managed in the past in order to extend the resources that we've banked from the last time we had to go out and ask for more money. You deserve to know that you're getting good value for your money. As far as the timing goes, I would propose having both requests on the same ballot for clarity of communication, for improving the, you know, the transparency, the, the uh, direct access to the decision makers, uh, I think they'll be well worth it. I think we have to make the case always. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hurd? Thank you. I've been a, a vocal proponent of the rebuild of Arlington High School since the beginning of my campaign in my first announcement. I think there's been universal agreement almost in town that the high school needs to be replaced. And of course that will in turn require a debt exclusion. The override Arlington has had an extended period, unprecedented extended period of financial stability. And there's a myriad of reasons involved, but we're, as, we're, as we come up to a period where we have to start talking about another override, it's certainly incumbent upon elected officials to review all current costs and also to, to try to find other sources of revenue. But I would also agree that these two issues should be on the same ballot because I think it gives voters the full picture of what they're up against and then that will help them decide what's best for the town. Thank you. Mr. Currow. Thank, thank you. Uh, you know, Arlington is really the envy of so many other communities with the long-range uh, planning process that we use. I, I've uh, had the privilege of serving for uh, most of my time, all of my time on the selectmen, most of my time on the school committee, on the long-range planning committee where we discuss these issues. This, this was a process that was instituted about 15 years ago where stakeholders come together, look at assumptions, test them, and look out into the future. And there is general consensus, I would say, not unanimity, but there's general consensus that we should try to um, 
<clears throat> time these two questions to go out together, partly because it takes a lot of people to assist in the education effort and going out and talking um, uh, to the voters. Um, and having to do that two years in a row is a, is a big uh, undertaking. Um, partly also, though, because we can bu bundle it in a type of covenant. That's the way we've gone out to the voters on general overrides before. Well, we've made a set of fiscal commitments coupled with service commitments. Um, and um, I think that the high school is such um, a, a major part of that program that it's incumbent upon us to do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Next question, we'll start with Mr. Hurd. How can we increase the amount of affordable housing in town to the point where we are no longer subject to 40B development? I think one way to increase affordable housing would be to certainly take advantage of the mixed-use development law to, to increase smaller units along the Mass Ave corridor. Um, but in addition to that, you know, there's a lot of talk about the, the, the knockdowns that are going on across town. I support reviewing the current policies to try to see if there's anything that can be done as an attorney in town that handles real estate closings. I can certainly tell that these types of developments are very are increasing the prices of properties dramatically, and it's taking young families who are trying to get into town, and it's making it so they can't buy these properties because the developers are building them. So that's certainly something that I would look into. Thank you. Mr. Currow? Uh, thank you very much. Well, I would argue that we already are there, but, but that's still a, a matter for litigation. Um, I know that there, there's been an assertion, I know, I, I think we're on the same page, my fellow candidates and I, there's been an assertion of the town's safe harbor uh, status, whereby we, we um, uh, rep have represented to the state that we, we have met the targets that would free us from um, 40B um, uh, encroachments onto local control. Um, that said, um, I think there are a number of strategies that we can take. The mixed-use development is, is one that was endorsed by uh, town meeting. Another thing that town meeting endorsed was actually relaxing parking requirements of certain types of residential developments. Um, as folks might know, parking actually contributes to a lot of the cost at times for uh, residential development. Our board has supported um, affordable housing efforts also, though, through um, the Community Development Block Grant um, um, grants as well as um, endorsing um, Community Preservation Act uh, funds for affordable housing uh, efforts. Thank you. Mr. Ruderman? Thank you. Uh, it, it's gratifying that uh, the town has finally taken up the brief that our, our former colleague in town meeting, John Belskis, and I have been working on for years to prove that we do in fact qualify for one of the safe harbor provisions in Mass General Laws 40 Section B. That is uh, having 1.5 percent of our land area used for affordable housing. We won't make it in, in, for years on the uh, number of units. I think we're still under 6 percent and the target is 10. But through the support of the Housing Corporation of Arlington, through the very far-sighted bylaw that town meeting passed a number of years ago for inclusionary zoning requiring medium and large developments to devote a portion of the number of units to affordability. I think we're making progress there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question we start with Mr. Curro. We have many vacant storefronts in town. What suggestions do you have for increasing business activity? Okay, thank you uh, for the question. Um, there are a lot of town meeting members here in the hall, and you know that we did pass a, a vacant um, commercial property uh, registry bylaw um, last year, or a year and a half ago. Um, that bylaw was actually recognized uh, two months ago by the Massachusetts Municipal Association with an innovation award. It was one of only th we were one of only three communities to receive an innovation award this year, and they cited uh, the drop in um, in uh, commercial vacancies from 17 to 5 in, this, in the center as a result of that. That was one piece of it. Um, our board is, one of our goals is we are looking to streamline licensing and permitting processes right now uh, between various departments. We're starting um, with a working group that consists of uh, myself representing the board as well as some of our professional staff to look at the entire workflow for opening a restaurant, what you might need 
be it you know, your, your food, victuals license, alcohol licenses, sidewalk seating, or whatnot, to try to steam, streamline that process so that there is no confusion on the part of new businesses coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Ruderman. A year ago, when town meeting took up this issue, I believe the count that our uh, uh, community planning and development office gave us was 17 vacant storefronts. Uh, latest numbers I've seen were that that was down to five, and that's good news. But that's the effect of the unseen hand in the marketplace. Real estate goes up and down. What can we do to, to push that hand in our favor? I'll give you three suggestions. We need to diversify the business climate and the types of businesses right now that we're inviting into Arlington. We don't do nearly enough to foster our cultural benefits, in, in particular our, our uh, tourism and uh, historical attractions. Number two office space in Kendall Square is at astronomical rents. Surely there are some small places in Arlington that could harbor one or two or three of those geniuses who are coming up with the future of technology. Uh, third thing is I believe our planning and development office should be doing more as aggressive matchmakers to industry, to sole practitioners that would like to come to Arlington. Thank you. Mr. Hurd? Thank you. As a business owner right in Arlington Center, I can say firsthand that the, the registry has worked and it has improved the vacancies in Arlington Center. But in order to solve this problem, we need to support local businesses. The vacancies are caused by turnover in businesses in Arlington. We can do this by revitalizing our business districts. I, I'm right in Arlington Center where the dreaded brick sidewalks are and I see seniors all day walking up and down those sidewalks and it's very troubling for them. We can increase parking. We implemented the metered system in the center and it's increased parking for the businesses which will help cr create more customers and revitalize our business districts to make them a cultural center to bring more foot traffic and make them more walk walkable and more bicyclable. Thank you. Uh, next question, we will be starting with Mr. Ruderman. What is the status of the Mugar property and what are your goals in resolving the Mugar situation? Well, the short answer is it's in litigation. Much, much longer answer is that we have uh, the, the specter of what I have termed a ruinous development jammed into that area at the peril of the surrounding streets, Mott and Dorothy and Mary and Birch, uh, not just from traffic, not just from noise, not just from uh, the, the pounding of the excavations, but disrupting the floodplain and raising the uh, uh, subsurface water levels uh, to create a, uh, a state of near permanent flooding. So we have to fight to gain back control of this property. If it's going to be developed, we need to wrest away the leverage from 40B. We need to be able to run the proposal through our Conservation Commission, through our Traffic Advisory Committee, through all the normal boards and agencies that work to ensure the quality of life in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Mr. Hurd? I second what Mike said, and I grew up right in this area. I have experience with the traffic. I have experience with flooding in houses in, right around the Mugar property. And I, from my first campaign announcement, have raised the Mugar property as one of my top priorities. So as a selectman, I would continue to join current selectmen, select members and the current elected officials to fight the Mugar property. This property would be horribly detrimental for the area. It would increase flooding. It would increase traffic on an already overcrowded street. It would push more cut through traffic through the neighborhoods. So as a selectman, I would make this a priority to continue to fight the Mugar property development. Thank you. Mr. Kuro. Thank you very much. I, frankly, I don't think you're going to find much disagreement up here. Um, you know, sitting on the, the board for the last six years, um, there is no part of town where we've had more um, persistent uh, traffic problems and complaints that we've tried to deal with than the Lake Street area. 
And um, this development going in would only exacerbate that. The issues of flooding that my fellow candidates have mentioned are also all too real. Um, I uh, attended the planning department's um, uh, re resilience uh, workshop on uh, climate change and uh, issue of flooding came up again and again there and uh, Mugar is really uh, in that neighborhood is, is ground zero for that. I mean, just talk to the <laughs> I talked to one of the poor folks at uh, Arlington Soccer Club who has the job of going down every Saturday to see if they're going to be able to play or not. So having the development uh, right next door is, is, is um, not going to help that situation. The board voted, um, I think, a year and a half ago to support the Zoning Board of Appeals in taking uh, any means necessary, including litigation, and we've, we've been supportive of them in that as they uh, seek to um, assert our rights. Thank you. Uh, the next question we will begin with uh, Mr. Hurd, and this is um, a two-part question uh, about related topics, and you'll see in a minute. What are your thoughts about the town's policies on addressing the opioid problem, and what is your position on medical recreational marijuana stores in Arlington? Give me the easy one. <laughs> <laughs> the opioid problem is awful. I, I grew up in Arlington and it is decimating the people that I grew up with. Every, it seems like every other week we see someone else that passed away of a drug overdose and it's always a name that I know. I, am, I support a lo local initiatives of former opioid addicts from town that are spreading the word and really helping to support the, the removal of, of opioid addiction. And I, sub, and I support the town policies and I'll continue to make this a priority. As to medical marijuana, I'll support the decisions of the voters. The Massachusetts voters voted to institute medical marijuana, so I'll support their decision and work with other board, other board members to find suitable locations that are in conjunction with what town residents want for those facilities. Thank you, Mr. Curro. Thank you very much. One of the um, most eye-opening things for me when I got on the Board of Selectmen is that we will periodically receive emails from um, the police chief through the town manager regarding um, uh, sudden deaths in the town and so many times those are due to um, uh, opioids. I recently attended the awards ceremony for the um, police department and um, there were so many life-saving awards were given to the police officers but the overwhelming majority of them were due to uh, opioid um, uh, overdose and, and reviving uh, individuals with Narcan. It's a big problem and we have to stay on it. I've worked with the Youth Health and Safety Coalition on recreational marijuana. Um, I am supporting the temporary moratorium on recreational marijuana. The board did um, issue a letter of um, uh, non-opposition to allow medical to go forward on Water Street and I think that the general consensus is we wanna see how that plays out before we move forward on recreation. Thank you, Mr. Ruderman. Constantly, I am gratified by the quality, you know, the, the, the devotion, the uh, care for the community that many, many of our uh, department heads and chiefs exercise, but in particular, our, our police chief, who through his instruction and through his example, runs a department that seeks to save lives over making busts. And I think we can rightly credit uh, the chief and, and the Arlington police with saving unknown numbers of lives. As for medical marijuana, it's the law of the Commonwealth. I wish the law had been written differently. I wish that if it was going to be dispensed for uh, medical purposes by, by a script, that it had been turned over to pharmacies but it wasn't. We have to find a place where we can, where we can rightly cite it. Uh, I am very hesitant about the introduction of recreational marijuana in these same locations. Thank you. The next question, we will start with uh, Mr. Curro, and it's a somewhat lengthy question, so if, if you, either one of you also need it repeated, I will do that. 
Many senior homeowners have been and are selling their homes and moving out of town to escape the current tax burden and the upcoming tax increases. Only 100 homeowners qualified for the 41C tax exemption in 2017. 41C limits a married couple over 70 years of age to a maximum income of $40,592 and maximum assets of $55,814, excluding principal residents. Any action on STM Article 5 is unlikely to be of help to our seniors. Would you support an 8 to 10 percent tax or CPA exemption for homeowners over 70 years of age? <laughs> That's a long question. That question's longer than the answer can be. Uh, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um, I have supported maximization of every um, uh, senior tax break that we, that we can do. Most recently, at the, la at the last town meeting, uh, the board back the Council on Aging in, in um, implementing some uh, tax uh, work off programs as well as a tax aid assistance uh, fund, which we are, if anybody's interested in serving on the committee for that, there are advertisements posted <laughs> on the town website right now. Um, at my request, the town manager did put two articles onto the special town meeting. One, to allow us to exercise home rule petition authority to implement, um, uh, to raise the income limits for tax deferrals. Uh, for seniors, whereby they may be on a, seniors may be on, a, be on a fixed income, but they have a very valuable asset in their homes to allow them to tap into that and not have to lose their their homes. Um, and that's all I've got. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Ruderman. Thank you. The, the thresholds under 41C for both salary and assets are outdated and, and way too low to offer enough protection. I mean, we've just seen that by the number of, of uh, uh, folks in Arlington who have qualified to take advantage of them. Uh, as far as a, a Community Preservation Act uh, uh, surcharge exemption, I would be all for that. When we passed the CPA, we decided to add a point and a half onto the two and a half percent, two and a half, you know, it was Proposition two and a half, uh, that we increase your real estate taxes by every year. And then we added another one and a half percent on top of that. So four percent year after year after year. Certainly, as the name of the act implies, if we want to preserve the stability of our communities, here's a place where we can, where we can focus on it. I would also ask that our town do a better job of making our senior population aware of tax deferrals and especially of uh, the, uh, the much more regulated market these days uh, for uh, drawing equity money out of the house by a reverse mortgage. It is safer, it is much more federally uh, circumspect these days and we should do a better job of publicizing it. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. I support exploring new avenues to help create affordability options for our seniors. I understand that we ask a lot of seniors. We have a lot on the block in, with the impending debt exclusion and a potential override. I know seniors are getting more and more worried about their, their tax bills and staying, being able to afford their houses. And I see it every day in my business. I, support, I, would, I would explore and look at the proposed CPA exemption. I can't commit to it right now because I don't know, it's just been proposed to us, but I definitely support different avenues to help defer costs for seniors and educating our seniors so they know what options are available to them before they have to put their house on the market. Thank you. This will be the last question before we go to closing statements, and we will be starting with Mr. Ruderman. How would you address the transportation issues facing the community, including parking issues and public transit access? Arlington Senior Transportation is managed through an enterprise fund, while most towns fund transportation as part of their regular budget. I think we need to do a better job in making our um, intra-town transportation uh, available, uh, effective, and useful. It's, it's underutilized. Uh, cer certainly it, it, it works well within its own budget, but we could expand that budget with contributions from the, from the general fund, make it available to more people 
the, uh, the one thing that I know, you know, for, from, from the years that I've worked for our, our state's Department of Transportation is that the key to getting people to use some mode is to make it reliable, make it available, make it regular, make it something that fits in with their daily lives. So whatever we can do to get, get that on a more expanded, locked down regular schedule would uh, uh, pick up the ridership. Thank you. Mr. Hurd? So on the parking issue, I've worked intricately on parking in town. I'm in the center. I think we've created a lot of business parking for our businesses through the use of the metered system. And this has helped improve the quality for, of our town for businesses, which will keep them in the storefronts. On transportation, I support any sort of, any avenue to help seniors. I think one, the Lexpress that you see in Lexington is certainly very successful. You know, uh, some sort of program to, to help get seniors and citizens around town that don't have access to vehicles will certainly help move citizens to our different business districts. Thank you. Mr. Curl? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I think the first thing we have to do is take a look at the Enterprise Fund and see, make sure that everything that we're using the fund for is actually providing direct service to our seniors. Um, I know there is a position in there, uh, it's an information referral coordinator, that we may want to look at swinging out into the general fund to provide more uh, direct service to, um, to seniors. Uh, the board has always um, consistently uh, supported the uh, transportation programming uh, through community development block grant funding. I think we actually increased it a little bit this year. Um, and um, <clears throat> one thing that we've had a discussion with the, um, uh, the director of the COA on is um, taking a look at shared ride services. Um, if that can be done safely, we can actually stretch uh, the funding more. Uh, on parking, uh, one thing I know that we're very proud of is we worked with the Commission on Disabilities to uh, uh, radically increase the number of parking for individuals um, uh, with placards uh, so that they, they do have access, readier access, um, if they're traveling by motor vehicle. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will now go to the closing statements from the candidates for selectmen. In reverse ballot order, you each have one minute to speak, and we will start with Mr. Curro. Thank you very much. Thank you again to the League, Vision 2020, ACMI for hosting this debate. Thank you to John and Michael for the invigorating discussion and thank you especially to the voters of Arlington for placing your confidence in me repeatedly over the last decade. I've made two core promises which I've repeated at each election, to be honest and to work hard. And I've strived to ensure that every decision I make is taken with these values in mind and I've been visible in the community and available to all. And as is my tradition, I'd like to offer you this year's version of Curo's campaign countdown. Three, two, one. So three, there are three candidates running for the Board of Selectmen. I am running for a third year term, and I'm third on the ballot. Two, you have two votes for Selectmen. And one, I respectfully ask for one of those two votes on Saturday, April 7th. <laughs> my name is Joe Curo, and I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Over the past three months, I have had the opportunity to meet with and listen to many Arlington residents and learn about the, the issues that are important to them. I am truly amazed and humbled by our residents' passion for Arlington and commitment to progress. Currently, Arlington is facing many important issues and the decisions our elected officials make will affect the town for many years. These issues and all issues facing the town need to be addressed responsibly and in a manner in, that serves the interests of all Arlington residents. I believe that my personal background and professional experience will bring a new perspective to the select board during this critical time. I look forward to working collaboratively with current board members, having positive discussions about issues and continuing to build on the immense progress Arlington has achieved over the past few decades. I respectfully, respectfully ask for your support in one of your two votes on Saturday, April 7th. Thank you. Thank you, and Mr. Ruderman. Thank you. One of the first people I talked to when I was thinking about this campaign said, I don't know how to run you. I said, 
run me? What do you mean? I said, are you the new guy? Are you the 27 year resident? Are you the uh, you know, 17 year town meeting member? Are you the new voice? Are you the Harvard guy? Are you the union guy? I said, yeah, I am. Mostly, I'm the communications guy. I'm the person who can talk to people and hear you and listen, everybody. If you elect me as one of your selectmen, you can count on someone who will always hear your concerns and respond with understanding and patience and work towards a solution. So please, vote on April 7th. I hope I've earned one of your two votes. Bring your kids. It's a good example. I wish your 16 and 17 year olds could vote with you. <laughs> please vote on April 7th. I'm number one on the ballot. Mike Ruderman, Selectman. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can <laughs> You know, they were, there were no, no. Okay. Um, not that I know of. Here, do you want to give it? Give one of them. Let me go get some. Well, he's got his own. I've he, got water. He's got water. Here. I'm good. I, I'm not sure. Let me just take the paper off yours, if I may. <laughs> I'm not just doing advertisement for Poland Springs. Oh, <laughs> Really? Okay. She's really? very good. <laughs> All right. Picky that way. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all. Nice. Now we, we're back in session. Now we will hear from the candidates for school committee. There are two candidates for two seats, each for a three year term. The candidates are Jeffrey D. Thielman and Jane P. Morgan. The seven members of the school committee serve three-year overlapping terms. They set policies for Arlington's public school system and appoint staff to implement these under the state laws and the policies of the State Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. The committee appoints a separate superintendent as chief administrator of the school department to make recommendations on personnel and programs. The school committee is responsible for the school department's annual budget and represents the town in collective bargaining with the teachers. We will hear opening statements from the candidates in the order they appear on the ballot. The first candidate is Mr. Thielman. Mr. Thielman, you have two minutes. Thank you to the League of Women Voters, Vision 2020, and ACMI for hosting this evening's forum. We are living in a most extraordinary moment. Teenagers responding to a terrible tragedy, are mobilizing a nation and many around the world to make our society a safer place. They lobbied their state legislature to change gun laws and organized more than 800 rallies around the world with millions of participants. Many of our students in Arlington have joined this movement. These, issue, these teenagers have gotten more done on this issue in six weeks than my generation has during the past 20 years. These kids are able to make so much change so quickly because they are receiving a great public education. I am running for re-election to the Arlington School Committee to make sure all children in our town, including my three kids, receive an excellent public education that empowers them to make the world a better place. During the past three years, as a member of the School Enrollment Task Force, I helped secure local support for the new sixth grade school at the Gibbs, the recent expansion of the Thompson, and the addition we are about to build at Hardy. I chair the Arlington High School Building Committee and am committed to an inclusive process that results in a beautiful new school that is supported lo by local taxpayers and state funding. A major challenge in the next two years is making sure we have enough operating revenue to meet rising enrollment. 
I will advocate for more state money, but the only way we will meet our needs is by increasing property taxes. I have been part of the give and take on this issue in the past, and I look far forward to being part of it in the year to come. I have worked to support children and families throughout my professional career. I enjoy working on the school committee, and I would be honored to be returned to the school, school, school committee with one of your two votes on April 7th. Thank you, Mr. Thielman. The next candidate is Ms. Morgan. Ms. Morgan, you have two minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you to ACMI and Vision 2020 for putting this on and, and the, uh, the League of Women Voters. I've been a woman voter. I'm going to date myself here for 22 years, um, but I've never been a woman candidate for townwide office. So it's exciting to sit in front of you today in that position. So I'm grateful to the League for putting this on and, and giving me the chance to look out and speak to all of you this evening. Um, I am a mother of four. I have a daughter who is 10, twins who are nine, and a newly minted five-year-old. In my spare time, I teach statistics online uh, at Southern New Hampshire University. Um, I teach students all over the world um, and really just try to drag them through statistics so that they can graduate. Um, I am running for one of the two open seats on the Arlington School Committee this cycle because my children have benefited so much from our schools. Um, and as somebody who has been, has had a child in school for the last six years, I've gotten to know so many other people who have, for whom the schools have been so important. And I have a close friend who in November lost her husband very unexpectedly. And when I went to see her the next morning and asked after her two young school-aged boys, she said, you know, they're, you know, they're having a hard time and it's really sad, but they want to go to school today. And for me, I think that was the moment where I was like, okay, this is really, really important because these children, their, their school is so important to them that that's where they want to be today. So I hope that you, I, I can't imagine that if you're coming out to town hall on a Wednesday night that you're not going to come and vote on Saturday, but I hope you bring your friends with you because it's important and it's a good habit. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, we will now start with the questions and we will begin with uh, Ms. Morgan. Do you believe Arlington schools are doing enough to support special needs students? Uh, no, I don't. I, I think, however, I think that we are doing very well with the resources that we have, right? Um, and I think that we are working hard to meet students where they are. But I think that, as with all things, we, you know, we have a budget that is very constrained and we have to make decisions about where we're going to allocate teachers and staffing. And when there's a, a hard cap to that budget, you can't do all of the things that maybe you need to do. Do I think we're making some really, really good choices to help our special needs students? Absolutely. Do I think that we can do more? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Thielman. Uh, you know, I, I've had a child on an IEP, and um, I think our special education teams work as hard as they possibly can to serve the needs of our kids. There are some cases that are very difficult and challenging, and they rise to the surface, and we try our best to respond to those situations. Uh, I, I, would, I would say, you know, the, the, the special education team that we have in the district, uh, the principals, uh, care about the needs of all children and are doing their very best. There are circumstances where they have not responded well. We had a situation over the past uh, several years we were reviewed by the state and we had a number of deficiencies uh, and we have worked to address them. So I think we're getting better. We're never perfect and uh, we, we have educators who are working extraordinarily hard to serve most kids and we could always do better. Thank you. Uh, the next question will start with Mr. Thielman. What policies and procedures are in place to ensure our students' safety, and do you have any suggested changes? Well, this has been a topic of a lot of our conversations at the school committee table, and it's going to be a conversation topic uh, tomorrow night. We are, <clears throat> uh, you know, we have worked very hard uh, to 
uh, institute a new system called Alice in the Public Schools to uh, teach kids and, and, and teachers to be prepared in case there is anything awful that might happen in the schools. Um, we have uh, tried, we have improved uh, safety locks in all of the schools. And one of the things that happens at the high school is kids open the doors and let people in to the school. Um, but, you know, the way you, the best way to create a safe school is to make sure there are deep relationships between students and adults in the building. And you actually address that problem by having more educators in the building, more counselors in the building, and getting kids involved in more sports, more extracurricular programming. So the deeper the relationship between, between the children in the school and the adults in the school, the more likely you are to know about any problem that might exist in the school, the more likely you are to anticipate it and to prevent it from happening. Thank you. Ms. Morgan. So to build on Jeff's response, the dealing with the infrastructure in our buildings, especially at Arlington High, is gonna do a lot to help keep our students safer, right? So the deficiencies in the building are not, you know, don't, certainly don't help when we don't have locks that work and we have doors that are easy to open. Um, so that's something that we're certainly, you know, certainly gonna be a big part of this rebuild process and it's very important. I can speak to Alice, the Alice program as a parent. Um, when my twins were young, they were in first grade and we, that was when we were rolling out this program and I went to the parent night and I was really concerned about how my kids were gonna deal with an active shooter lockdown drill in school. And um, what I can tell you is, is that they came home that day and I said, hey, so, you know, how did it go? And they're like, well, we know what to do in case a swarm of bees come into the building. We're going to be okay. And so what I can say is that it, I'm really grateful that the program is so developmentally appropriate for our kids. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the next question, we will be beginning with uh, Ms. Morgan. After school programs have long wait lists, and this creates stress for families, how can Arlington Public Schools address this? So this is something that I hear about, and, and not even as a school committee candidate, just as a parent on the blacktop every day, people talk about after school. And it's a really tricky thing because we have a variety of after school options in Arlington. Some of them are town run, some of them are privately run, and it's really complicated. I think it's a really, really tough nut to crack. What do I think we need to do first? I think we need to get a sense of how, I'm, I'm a statistics professor, right? So I operate based almost entirely on data. And I need to under, we need to understand how long are these wait lists, right? For some people, a really long wait list is two weeks, right? Or you could be on a wait list for two years, and that is a really, really long time. So we need to understand what our needs are, and then we need to make decisions that make sure to uphold the really high standards of after school that we have become accustomed to in Arlington. Thank you. Mr. Thielman. We were on the waiting list at the Brackett School, I think, for a year, year and a half, so I relate to this problem. Um, the best thing to do is for the school committee to set up a com one of our subcommittees to take a, statistic, a good look, as Jane said, at uh, data. And that is to see how many families in town want after school programming, uh, how many people are on the waiting list. We have some of this information because Vision 2020 has already done some research, I think. And then to use uh, that information to look at all of the programs in all of the schools to see if there are ways to expand. Expansion requires us to use more classrooms after school, it requires more personnel, and it requires us to look at the relationships we have right now with some of the vendors. And we have to be willing to do that, that's a school committee responsibility, that's something that needs to be done through a subcommittee, and uh, it needs to be done with good research and good involvement by both uh, people that are providing after school care, the district's leadership, and uh, the school committee. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be starting with Mr. Thielman. How is Minutemen Tech integrated into Arlington's educational plans? Well, we, we do, I think, a pretty good job of promoting Minuteman Tech uh, and the Minuteman Tech option to students in Arlington. And when the new Minuteman Tech is built, uh, it's going to become a popular attraction for the district. We, all of us who worked on the last debt exclusion campaign, campaigned for the debt exclusion to support Minuteman Tech. 
Uh, it was part of the, over, the overall effort, and we did that because there are 120 to 130 kids every year in the town of Arlington that attend that school. And I think it's a very good option for lots of children in the school district, and I think it's something uh, we can always do a better job of promoting, but it is a very, very good educational option for kids. Uh, it has a high-quality program there. It's a college prep school. Kids graduate from that school, and most of them, a lot of them, go on to college, and they go on to college with good skills. So Minuteman is very much a part of the district, and the kids who go there are very much Arlington kids who are part of our district. Thank you. Ms. Morgan. So Minuteman High School is, is absolutely Arlington's second high school. It happens to be located outside of Arlington, but I, I actually drive by it regularly and, and, um, and feel a lot of pride about um, the decision that Arlington made a couple of years ago to support the rebuild and to remain a district school, which is really, really important. Um, I think that you know, we need to continue to promote it as a viable option. Um, and I think that I, for one, am really grateful that it's a choice that I may have for my kids as we work through the Arlington High School rebuild. And that, yes, you know, it's going to be a disruptive rebuilding process here in town, but we have a really great other option and a brand new building that's available for our kids. So we couldn't be more fortunate. Thank you. Uh, well, the next question, we'll start with Ms. Morgan. What is your 10-year long view on how to alleviate overcrowding in our schools, and this is followed by a statement, modest additions at Thompson, Hardy, et cetera, won't cut it. <laughs> so I think it's a great question. I will say, as somebody who is steeped in enrollment data, and that's one of the things that brought me to the table a few years ago, um, I feel reasonably comfortable right now with where we are with our our, uh, our infrastructure. I think we've made some swift and smart choices about where to put additions. I think we have flexibility with our buffer zones. I think we are opening a new middle school um, and we are gonna make some smart, I'm confident we're gonna make some really intelligent choices as we put our high school together. What I will say, and my ten, thinking about 10 years ahead, I think we've done a great job with the infrastructure. I think we need to continue to push hard to get the right number of people into these buildings. As our student populations have grown, we haven't been able, because of the constraints of our budget, to add in a, you know, a, a, enough additional nurses, social workers, et cetera. So. Thank you. Mr. Thielman? About 10 years out, well, I mean, the, our, our job on the school committee is to continue to monitor enrollment growth over the next decade. We, uh, I was on the school enrollment task force that looked at uh, the Gibbs, the Hardy, the Thompson, and we secured town support to expand the Gibbs, to, re to put the sixth grade at the Gibbs, to expand uh, the Thompson, and now expand the Hardy. And that takes care of the enrollment challenges over the next couple of years. We just have to continue to monitor it, and then we may have to uh, pivot quickly like we have done for the, uh, the Thompson and the Hardy. Um, it's, I mean, it's really too early to tell, but I will, I will say this, there's a lot of goodwill in town, and the uh, school enrollment task force is evidence of the way town leaders work together to solve the problem. And I think we can do the same thing again if we find that enrollment spikes uh, greater than it's anticipated. Thank you. Mr. Thielman will get the next question. Town meeting is considering a uh, consolidated municipal finance department. What are your thoughts on how this impacts the schools? I think the schools are going to be fine no matter what the town meeting does. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I, think, uh, I, I think this is a, a, a fine solution. I will say that um, you know, the school department and the town work very closely together right now. Uh, there's good cooperation, there's good uh, communication between the school district and the town. I think when I first got on the school committee years ago there was some tension. I think that's gone away because there's a good relationship between the town manager and the superintendent and uh, the consolidated uh, uh, finance department uh, will, will benefit the town. A, you know, something to consider in this whole process is that um, you know, the school budget is controlled by the school committee. It's a, by law, it's a separate budget. And uh, in the consolidation of operations, um, we have to consider the fact that you know, the actual allocation of money, the decision of where to allocate money is a, is a school department, school committee decision. Thank you. Ms. Morgan? 
So I don't have many concerns about consolidated municipal finance. It seems really sensible, I'm very much in favor of getting them all in the same building. That seems like a really good idea um, and something that I would obviously support happening. Um, it, you know, it seems as though, in my experience, um, there's a lot of work that's done between the schools and the town. And generally, as Jeff has said, that it, you know, it happens relatively symbiotically. So I, you know, I, don't, I don't expect it to be a huge issue for the schools. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with you, Ms. Morgan. Do we teach civics and enough about town meeting? Do we teach civics and enough? Well, I can tell you that earlier this fall, my third graders were in this hall um, and they did a mock town meeting where they debated, uh, I believe it was water fountains. They talked about having restaurants that didn't have parents in them. Um, <laughs> And I, I, you know, it escapes me what the third very important article was that they discussed. But, you know, I think that this Arlington, we are so fortunate. We live in this town that has such a, a spirit of service. And I think that that is something that we need to and can continue to teach our children. So they can certainly learn more about town meeting, but I think that we're surrounded by people who really think that service is important. And so I hope that, you know, that that gets distilled down for our kids. Thank you, Ms. Thielman. Um, I think we actually do a pretty good job of teaching civics and uh, we do a good job of teaching people about town meeting. You know, when you try to add more and more to the curriculum, the curriculum our curriculum is pretty packed as it is. So I'm always, uh, you know, you hear from constituents who say you should add this to the curriculum and kids should learn more civics and they should learn more, more town meeting and then, you know, they have, to, they have to do a lot of other things in the district uh, in their classes uh, right now. So I think we do a good job. I think a lot of students, uh, most students graduate from the town of Arlington knowing about our town, uh, town meeting form of government. Uh, they are mock town meeting opportunities and the kids do love that and they invite us to come to those things and they are really entertaining and um, a lot of fun to watch and you know they got great ideas so. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, question, the next question we will start with Mr. Thielman. If you had an extra hundred thousand dollars in the budget uh, how would you spend the money? Uh, more teachers. So I would, I would definitely have more educators in the classroom. So the, 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 the more teachers we have teaching our kids, uh, the, the, the better off we are. And that, that would always be my top priority. Thank you. Ms. Morgan. So I would probably split mine. $100,000 just doesn't get you very far. If it could have been a million, that would have been, we could have had a real conversation and I think we yeah. could have ticked a whole, few, a whole bunch of things off. Yeah. $100,000 these days, unfortunately, just doesn't get you very much. Um, so what would I do? I would have, um, you know, I would probably have more building subs because substitutes are hard to come by and that kind of, you know, that sort of transient teacher experience is tough for kids and we expect a lot of our teachers, they're out of the classroom a lot, doing professional development, attending meetings, um, and, and we need really high quality people to come in and, and take care of our classrooms when their teachers are out. So I think that would be something that could make potentially, with only $100,000, <laughs> a measurable difference. Um, so, but yeah, next, next time, let's ask for a million. Will do. It's <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, this will be the last question before we go to closing uh, statements, and we will start with Ms. Morgan. Is there a subject you would like to talk about that didn't come up tonight? Oh, that's great. I love talking about all kinds of things. Hmm. I think what I, what I think is really important and what I see one of the biggest roles of the school committee being, especially in the next you know, 10 months, is being able to present a really cogent sense of what we want our schools to look like. And I really, really want to be a part of that process. And I want to go down to the nitty gritty of, you know, what I was talking about before. What do we want our building subs to look like? What do we want our libraries to look like? What do we want to be able to provide our students 
in school. So like, what does that look like? What does a fully funded school budget look like? And that it's hard. We have to be able to figure out what that is and then be able to communicate it to everybody. So that's something that I, I guess, so I guess the question that I wanted to answer is, what do you think is the most important job of the school committee over the next 10 months? That's what I think we need to do. Thank you. Mr. Thielman. We're going to be working on a, on a, on a five-year or multi-year plan that talks about what the Arlington Public Schools actually need over the next several years. And then we're going to take that plan and we're going to enter into conversations with uh, the Board of Selectmen and town leaders to make sure we have a, a thoughtful conversation about what the next override should be. And, it's, and, and so I was hoping that would come up tonight, but that's, that's an important part of our job on the school committee. It's an important part of our dialogue with the voters over the next uh, several months. There was a question asked uh, in the selectmen discussion about uh, a potential override. And my position is on it, is that we have, an, a, we have a, an honest conversation with the voters about what it costs to operate a first class school district, what it costs to maintain great schools, what it costs to maintain a great town, and then talk to the voters about what that costs and present options to the voters in a very straightforward, honest way. So that's what I want the school committee to do over the next couple of years, over the next couple of months, and that's what I look forward to doing if re-elected. Thank you. We will now hear the closing statements from the candidates for school committee in reverse ballot order. You each have one minute to speak, and we will start with Ms. Morgan. Great, thank you all so much for coming tonight. It's really fun to talk to real people um, who are engaged. And um, I, you know, I, I think if I can leave you with anything, I'm really excited about the opportunity to serve on the Arlington School Committee. And I have been so humbled over the last few months and even over the last years, seeing so many people in this town who volunteer tremendous amounts of time to improve our schools, to improve our public projects. Um, and, and this is a town that has really, you know, exceptionally talented employees, certainly, but it's also very much depends on the will of volunteers. And so that's something that has been so moving to me, and I hope that it will continue to motivate you to go out and vote in a couple of weeks' time and to take five, ten of your friends with you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Thielman. You know, we have a great schools in Arlington. Our high school is one of the top ranked schools in the nation. Uh, our, our middle school is a very good middle school. We have very, very good schools in the, in the town of Arlington. And the reason why we have good schools in, in the town of Arlington is three reasons. One, we, there's a lot of public support. There's people who believe in education, whether they have children or not, and who want the schools to be good and are proud of that. We have good leadership in the school district. We've had good, steady leadership for a long time now. We have people in the leadership of the district who understand where we need to go educationally and have led us there. And then thirdly, we have a, a high-functioning school committee, and that's really important for the governance of any district. If you study education or study education trends, the, 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 the more steady the school committee is, the more steady the governance of any uh, organization is, the better the performance of our students is. And so I'm running for re-election to the school committee to keep those three things going, to keep the public support of what we do, to support our leadership, and to make sure our school committee continues to be high functioning so that our district performs and our kids learn. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the candidates running for office and for adhering to the timing, schedule, and format. I would also like to thank the town meeting members, candidates, who are here this evening. And I also want to thank the Arlington League for inviting me back again this year to moderate. I always enjoy this evening. And Patty Muldoon will now close the program. Thank you all for lasting through our whole evening. And we, of course, want to thank Margaret Copey for being our moderator. So thanks again to all the candidates and to you, the audience, for participating tonight, for your great questions, uh, and to our viewing audience. And thanks to Arlington Community Media for broadcasting this forum. So if you're interested in the activities of either Vision 2020 or the League of Women Voters of Arlington, information's available in the back of the hall. 
And just as a reminder, the League is hosting a brunch for our state legislators on uh, April 8th. So if you'd like to attend, please speak to one of us or go to our website, lwva.com. And in addition, the Fiscal Resources Task Group of Vision 2020 has compiled a government primer based upon six Citizens' Corner articles that were published in the Arlington Advocate. Um, copies are available uh, through the town's website and some of them out back. Candidates Night has been broadcast live from Town Hall starting at 8 o'clock on March 28, 2018. A rebroadcast schedule of this program is available in the Advocate and online at acmi.tv. To the voters tonight and throughout the town, please remember to vote on April 7, 2018. Polls are open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if any of you are so moved to work as a town employee for the day, um, Marie Kropelka at the uh, Board of Selectmen's office is looking for more poll workers, just as a, a mention of that, clerks and inspectors. So we thank all of you for coming tonight and for watching this forum as sponsored by Arlington's Vision 2020 and the League of Women Voters of Arlington. Thanks. Good job. <laughs> <laughs>